Welcome to Face Hammer YouTube video where we are going to talk about Terry Pike's excellent latest commission, which is his lovely, lovely Sinesh Army. So we figured we'd record a YouTube video about this to show uh, the models off so you can have a look at the pictures and we can talk about them and, uh, and talk about the colour schemes and that. So. <laughs> So do you want to give us a little bit of background on the army, Terry? Or you, you... Um, well, I was just tasked with doing a Slanesh army um, for someone on the scene, and they left it pretty much all to my devices. So I picked a oh, colour scheme that I probably would have done myself, which is bright, colourful, something that people don't really normally do with Slanesh. They're more flesh-coloured um, than like the purple, pale, you know, demonette hide that you yeah, normally see so the nash done and so they pale skin isn't it and stuff and yeah you've done it like more, so they've more got more of a ones. more of an actual closer to flesh color like quite um trying to think what i use kislo flesh mixed with a bit of um like bone in it just to sort of um... so i've just put the keeper up on the screen um so people can see that so you can um yeah. you can see the color scheme terry's talking about so just talk us through you've done like a, a nice sort of realistic flesh color um so yeah. what else did you when you were doing that what what colors did you think would go around the edges with that um so on a tester model i did for myself a long time ago i wanted the the pink to purple um transition um towards like their feet and their hands and like the scaly bits of the model so like on the tail on the keeper as well and and the some of the demonettes they have it on um i just wanted it to be purple as well I, I you know i love painting purple and pink so it, it seemed to go nicely with the flesh through to pink through to um the purple and the pink use is actually um Vallejo sunset red and when you put that over flesh you get a really really nice vibrant um color which then you can immediately darken down with the purple which is uh, Vallejo's purple as well hexed uh lichen Excellent, like him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, that's I, my go. That's my go-to purple. It's but... really, really vibrant. That isn't it. That color is oh, recovers yeah, it so covers well. Black in like a second. Yeah. If you put it over black, it's really dark, like you'd expect. But when you put it over white, it's super, super, super bright. Like such a vibrant purple. But when you, you know, you look at it and think it's not going to be that bright, but it, it really is when you. It, when the you transitions to that through airbrush then I yeah so the transitions like, were all knocked out with the airbrush um you i mean across an entire army it would just take i think you'd be taking too long to yeah to, you know to hand blend that down you could put some simple transitions down but i think if you want a smooth blend on like the keeper's legs from flesh right at the top to purple right at the bottom it's going to take way too long not, for a gaming army there's not a fast you, way to do it yeah no there's you just can't beat the airbrush in certain applications and i think that is one of them when you're trying to put down a gradient across you know what is it 50 70 85 models yeah they're not I mean, small especially when they're, you know they're smooth right as well if it was like uh, a load of dragons or something with scales yeah, you, that, you, you can get away with a lot more there yeah you could dry brush over a lot of that and the scales would take a lot of the transition wouldn't they but yeah. when you're doing legs on a keeper that are like long yeah. elegant like stocking type material you I, I just don't think you can really no really beat the airbrush for that you could probably do like a weird contrast wet blend on the surface maybe but i, I still it's don't think you'll time, get the it? result that you want for the time yeah. invested i just don't think you're going to get that result any other way so um, did the was the satiny sort of like turquoisey blue like uh cloak was that airbrushed as well and then sort of like so, touched up with brush blending no so or on the you, no. on the two keepers it's airbrushed because the robes are separate so big yeah and they're so big yeah. um on all the other models it's blended so it's just a quick wet blend on the surface on like the epitome celesque's robes um the demonettes and everything else themselves have all just got quick blends on the I say quick blends are not really quick at all, but... I was going to say, you've got to slow down at that point, right? Yeah, I mean, on the characters, the blends are, good, like, you know, they're, they're, they're decent. 
there was time put into those on the demonettes you can get away of like a quick sort of like an almost glazy wet blend over the top um because it's the those, hair isn't it yeah, dark at the roots going out to the tips I yeah the hair you could get blonde. almost get away with dry brushing to be fair i just kind of yeah. sort of overbrush them with like not a dry brush just it, it was <clears throat> a very controlled messy highlight over yeah. hair where you just pick out the ridges with a with one quick one quick stroke um, but yeah, the the robes on the keepers and shellaxi were were airbrushed on, and then I varnished them as well with uh, satin varnish just to um, keep, keep like I used a mixture of paints, so some had a glossier finish than others. I think yeah. I used my Tamiya flat white ran out, so I used Tamiya white, and it's actually quite glossy. Yeah, um, which was surprising because I I. I would have thought it was just like a normal finish, like, you know, somewhere between satin and matte, like most of the colors, but it was actually quite glossy. So I, once all the robes were done, I hit them all with a satin varnish and you're probably going to pick the models up by the robes quite a bit. Yeah, you are. Um, Cause so you're using, you're using Tammy there. I presume other people might not know that it's just like silk when it comes out the airbrush. You're using that because it comes out so smooth, I guess. Yeah. So with um, whites, with the airbrush, I think you, you've got two real good options um you've got white ink or you've okay. got tamiya whites i was just about to say if you've used the daler and Rowney white ink yeah because that's i, I, I have used that yeah um, it's awesome uh yeah so what i found is the tamiya flat white is just smoother anyway the, so I, I would have thought the ink would have actually been a smoother flow through the airbrush but the tamiya flat white and the tamiya white in this case just seemed smoother anyway even though the ink should have smaller pigment Small in it pigments. as well because yeah. it's because it's an ink not a taint tammy just feels like it's it's like it's like pre-lubed it, it just comes out of an airbrush just always behaves always is consistent and out of machinery at least not with a brush i think it's a nightmare like that i don't think you the... can apply it with a brush because the oh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't stick properly um no so just um just so we talk about the scheme again so you've got the light, light blue robes and that you've done like green gems is there a reason you went for green uh it just contrasts nicely against the flesh um and obviously the the blue is actually a green although it looks blue it's so tech green okay. mixed with white Ooh, so yeah. there is there is that turquoisey element to it so it's not actually a pure blue there is a green um hue in in there which is more visible when you've actually got the models in hand um, yeah. And obviously the green goes nicely because you've already got the the slight tint of green yeah, in, a hint of it, yeah. in, in the um, robes and hair. Um, but it just stands out nicely against the the purple and the gold. Obviously, because all the metal is gold washed with purple, the you know the green just contrasts really nicely against it. And I I just think green green's just classic for gems, isn't it? They when you see nicely painted green gems, they're just pleasing. I think even if you put yeah. them on a green model, they'd still look pleasing enough because <laughs> you've got the yellow in there as well, like yeah. as the final highlight on the, on the green gems normally, um, and they're glossy as well. So they, I always see uh, gems classic color is red, but that's uh, back to yeah, the high elf armies I used to paint. But I think, me, green yeah. green seems to be the one I've done the most of. I think because um, obviously that elder army I did previously that had green gems. Purple, was it? I, know, I can't remember. No, it's some purple accent color against the black, wasn't it, that you did with the other one? That was why I'm thinking purple. Did I do green gems? I can't remember now. Okay. I thought I did, per you know, I did purple got... glowy weapons, but the gems... And the purple. It's the accent that I'm thinking of because yeah, of the, the purple on the... Yeah, like, the, the purple on the and stuff, yeah. tanks and stuff, but the gems themselves were green. Yeah, yeah, they were green. Uh, I think red wouldn't have worked particularly well on that scheme as well. If you'd have put like... No, it probably would have clashed with, maybe. The, with the red and the flash, it's, maybe. It's, I think um, orange be, could have could have done quite well, like an orangey to yellow. Yeah, but yeah, yeah orangey yellow would have been nice. I'm just showing the back yeah. of the keeper now, so you can see the the smoothness on those um those robes that are on the back. So you you did you do any brushwork on that, or is it all just airbrush? The robes on the keepers are pure airbrush. But you normally it's glaze at the end, do you? Like with a paint so glaze. Normally... Normally I would paint glaze over them, but the the finish on them was so smooth mm. from 
the um, the Tamiya that I I didn't really see the no point the need yeah because I sprayed I sprayed no. on the the satin varnish and it just it just smoothed out the surface a little bit more and yeah. there was very little obviously if you have airbrush anyone listening in the past white you often get the dusty powdery yeah. Yeah. effect because spraying white over anything the odd little droplet that goes it's here scary. or there is really obvious but tamia just you don't really get much um they're so smooth um like shout out to andy wardle's white scar bike video yeah. like, oh, if God, you've yeah. if you've seen that or haven't seen that go that is amazing for doing white um and again he uses tamia whites and you can see why they they're so smooth um but yeah, normally when I do any airbrushing, I'll I'll put a washer or glaze over afterwards just to get rid of that airbrushed look yeah. of yeah. the powdery finish you sometimes get. Obviously, all the skin was done with airbrush and then washed with a mixture. So the whole model, effectively, other than the robes, is washed with this mix. So it's the metal, the skin, the claws, the purple, all of that is all washed with um, a dritchy violet, Lamia medium with some soft tone army paint, the soft tone in there as well. Nice. Um, I like washing classic mixes. Yeah, I like washing um, gold with purple, um, especially yeah. with the snatch. It gives that. It just gives that really nice finish. Um, the little bit of soft tone in there just it just ties it all together. It, it gives you it smooths out the transitions on the skin a little bit. That extra little bit of soft tone, and it gives that sort of brownie shadow in the skin as well on top of the purple. Um, yeah, it's, the metals have got like a really nice, like bronzy feel because of the purple, obviously over the yeah. purple in the brain over the gold. Yeah, like, makes it look... The metal's simple as well. It's it's Balthazar gold. It's washed the purpley mix, and then it's got a silver highlight on it. That's that's it. There's no, yeah. I've not had to do any extra layers or anything on it. It's. I think it's quite a good example of when you you focus on the focal points of the model like the skin the bright blue and the details can be done very simplistically um you know like the metals and things like that because there's you don't want the eye drawn to those areas too much anyway but you want to make sure yeah. they've got definition so i've just yeah. got um shellaxi yeah. hellbane on the screen and i'm looking at the shield it reminds me of necrons just because it's like silver bronze and bright luminous green <laughs> so yeah that is quite and cool again, that, that was that was straightforward again just silver um base coat with the balsar gold and i washed the whole thing with the same um purple and then i just put some little tiny silver scratch marks on it just to sort of add a bit of you know liveliness to the shield painted the gems and glossed them um and yeah. again washing all the metal as well with the soft tone purple mix takes a lot of the shine off the metal so that when you put your highlights on you're controlling where the highlight where the shine is yeah. Um because obviously met you know, when you're base coating and highlighting metals, if it's all shiny, it's hard to see where the highlight really sits. But if you control it by making the rest of the metal darker, then you really get to sort of show where you want your highlights rather than the natural metal highlight to sort of put it where it wants to. So you yeah. sort of control it a bit more, almost like with a non metallic metal because you've doled it down so it's not shiny to put the highlight back in to add the shine afterwards. So what about the basin then? Yeah. Did you just did you come up with that? You just wanted so, to keep it close again, to the blue and it's like almost like a turquoise, isn't it? It is a, it's um like a jade like an emeraldy colour. Um I'm trying to think what colour it is. Uh light turquoise maybe. Actually I've got it here on my desk. Um emerald turquoise it's got dark sea blue and blue green yes yeah, so it's vallejo blue green and then it's just shaded around the the rock with um vallejo dark sea blue like quite thin just to I add a bit of shadow dark sea blue is an amazing paint dark, dark sea blue is, is 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 one of my favorite colors um it's it's amazing i did the skin okay, on um my latest bellicor with, with dark sea blue mixed in as well and again, um, you've used um, the finish to affect that. You've used varnishes. Yeah, so you've got a really matte base with matte pigments next to gloss varnish. So it, it really sells. You know, the bases just pop. You'll see those across the gaming hall. Same same yeah. way I've done my basing on my army. Purple with 
you know, the, the tentacles and slime and bubbles. This one I wanted a more simplistic, so I didn't put bubbles or tentacles in. I just kept it, you know, as a, a one coat of water, effectively, just like, you know, blue, po- you know, poisonous lakes or something. Just, it, it yeah. needed to be something you... bright and colourful. Did you achieve that the standard way, which is, for people who don't know, sort of like get the cork down and then just apply PVA thickly and let it dry, or did you do it a different way? Um, So with these, I, yeah, so cork down first and then PVA over the plastic base, because obviously the plastic base has its own texture. So put PVA down over it. Once it's dry, do it again, because as the PVA dries it shrinks in it shrinks yeah. away from the edge of the base so you need a couple of coats of it um you could use water effect or something as well um which will again will shrink a little bit um i've seen people sand the bases as well just to get rid of that texture to smooth them out and then then put the That's water what I did with my lumina. PBA, yeah over afterwards but again because it's a commission army i don't i don't want to put on a load of different water textures and yeah because it's a gaming army as well so it's not you know, it's not meant to have super realistic water. It's just meant to look effective, and you know, then a nice tidy black rim just frames the the turquoise quite nicely. Yeah, I'm uh, just um, choices are gorgeous. I'm just looking at the Celesque on the screen now. Um, so this is one of my favourite Celesque models. Um, what I really like about what you've done on here is you've picked out all the scarification in like um, almost white. Uh, and again, you've got this ice blue lipstick thing going on, which is uh, yeah. So I put that blue on steel and <laughs> demonettes and uh, yeah, I the face just looked a little bit boring. With you know, I thought I could do some like crazy eye shadows or you know something. I just put the blue lipstick sort of on. I was like, do you know what? That's I think that's enough. That works. The eyes, yeah, because yeah. the model's got great eyes as well because they're bigger because yeah. it's like a a larger sculpt isn't it it's like almost a 54 mil size model the it's an amazing eyes model really yeah. Nice to paint. yeah i just um, i was looking at the job you did on the eyes of really good and the way you've even done a little bit of like under shading on the bottom eyelid you know to... yeah so they, they have got that sort of bit of shadow there i was going to glaze some like purple or blue around the eyes as well just to um uh you know add that extra color but with with the sort of shade in the face I already had it was i think it was just enough and i didn't want to like overdo it i think you know you can overcook these things sometimes when you add too many colors yeah 100 uh, percent. i really like the um i really like his robe as well like around his legs that was a joy to paint when i did mine oh the, i'd love painting the robe on it and it didn't actually take too long i when i started doing it, i thought oh this is going to be this is going to be long but obviously where i'm painting all the time i've got a lot quicker at you know blending over the years and you you know, just a couple of quick layers, you can get a really effective result on that robe just because the folds in the robe are quite... They're so defined, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite obvious. So I think you could just airbrush it as well and hold it at such an angle that it just misses all of the undersides. Um, and I mean, again, with contrast, it would sit like a, you know, a couple of washes would sit quite happily on the on the folds as well. Well, the Sinesh so, Army I did was all contrasted, and it, it went really well over those robes. It looked great, so... Yeah, there's, there's yeah, cool. you know, those sort of models, you can you can spend hours on those sort of heroes, and I actually spent quite a lot of time on him, because it's... He's big enough that you can airbrush some of it, but he's also small enough that you have to go in and do a lot of brushwork. He's not like a traditional monster where a lot of its big pieces that are separate and with him i built the entire thing and kept the demonette on top the herald separate Mm. um but for him i think it was just his axe that was separate to him so you know his head and the collar and everything was already sort of in place but i think you could have maybe subassembled it a little bit more but when I did mine, I, I kept the demonette on his back banner, and I, the, the only sub-assembly was the entire back banner with the demonette sat, stood in yeah, it, and so him I as did, separate. I did think about doing that. Um, I kept the back piece and the demonette separate so that I could um, sort of manoeuvre her around a little bit more. But, th- yeah, that would have worked just as well. Um, but I'd already done it, so I just kept them separate. And you, yeah. do you use weathering powder on the base to get that orangey yeah. look? Yeah, so they've got a secret weapon, orange, uh, rust, just 
around the sort of sandy bits on the base just to break it up and give it another colour. Um, How do you, you apply, apply it, that with like dry or wet or because I I've always used I've always applied weathering powder wet like make a wash out of it and then let it dry and then dust over the top to to blend it into the if it sort of like needs tide marks or do yeah. you just brush it I just dry? use an old old brush pick it up and then just place it where I want it and just dust it in with the tip of the brush and then you can seal it afterwards. I use with... this stuff a texturizer for AK Interactive. It's, it's ah, like okay. acrylic resin. It's really yeah. good for applying weathering powder. Yeah, so you can seal it with varnish or isopropanol. So it's, you can, you don't need a lot to um, to seal it down. A lot. I'm just trying to think what the other thing people use is uh, isopropanol varnishes. I think there is pigment fixer also, as well, isn't there? Or just yeah, alcohol there is in general. Fixer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, isopropanol through the airbrush, straight. Yeah, just blast on and it will look like you've sprayed it all off but that's just because it's wet and it goes darker but once it dries yeah. and it's fixed it, the orange will come back. back again i mean you lose yeah. some of it but yeah you know you can you can always just dust a little bit more on afterwards but yeah the, like you said that's the other way to do it is to make a wash apply it like a wash and then it sits in the recesses and forms like a quite a natural dusty look anyway yeah. yeah, that's, that's how I've used mine in the past. Mine. Especially if it's recessed, it's like uh, I've got a model, a neck one here. If it's in the joins there, you can't pick up a model by the internal bits of its joins, just by definition. So, yeah, if, uh, so you don't really even yeah. need to fix it in in a lot of places. To be fair, on those um, demonettes and stuff, you probably don't actually need to fix it on the base because you can't really touch. No, you can't really touch it anyway because it's People get picked up by their torsos or their weapons or something. Yeah, it's in amongst hair, grains of sand, so you're not. You're not really going to touch it you know, much at all. But So with um, the demonettes, did you airbrush the purple, the skin to purple, then just brush in the other detail? Yeah, so the, the entire army was sprayed flesh first, then the purple, the sunset red, and then the purple. Um, and then I went back and painted all the gold and silver on every single model, and then washed the entire right. army as well. So at that point, everything was done to the same stage, and then the skin and the metal was done, and then it's a case of just painting the robes, the hair, and the teeth, and spikes, and bits. It's... What, what's the exact flesh recipe, Terry, from start to finish? Um, so it's uh, the model was uh, spray black, uh, mm -hmm. then it sprayed Tamiya white from above with the airbrush. Um, I probably would have sprayed it white out of a can, but I just didn't have any to hand. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't like yeah. using Corax white for doing it because I've, I've just always had bad results with it going quite grainy. So mm -hmm. I just white white through the airbrush top down just to brighten up the top of all the models because they're pro predominantly quite a bright color scheme. So you want to put the flesh over a white. Let it pop. Yeah. It just yeah to really to really get it to show through. Uh, white from above and then the whole model is effectively sprayed with um, Kizza flesh. Then it's sprayed top down with bone white, just to yeah. sort of brighten up the tops, so that when you put the wash on, there's a good bit of color definition between the, you know, the top and bottom of the flesh. Uh, sunset red on all the claws and like limb sort of ends, so the ends of the legs, tails, claws. Um, you know, then it's the hex lichen towards the end. Um, and then it's just the wash over it, the Drucci Violet, Soft Tone, Lamy Medium. And that that's the skin done at that point. On the Keepers, um, I did go back and um, paint in some highlights on like some of the muscles and bits and pieces. Not yeah, sure not is. with not with like layers or anything, just like really small, subtle, like almost like a glaze over the top just to make some of the shapes a bit more pronounced. Pull it up a bit, yeah. Um, and you I mean you could just go back and dry brush over yeah. the skin and stuff as well. Like it just yeah. depends what sort of effect you're going for at the end. And then on the claws, I ran like some um, black through the airbrush right at the ends of the keepers yeah. and Shalaxi's claws, just so they were really dark at the end, and I highlighted them a bit of grey. Uh, and then went in, and so the claws on the all the bigger stuff is painted um, with doomball brown or battlefield brown from p3 basically the same color like a burnt ember brown um burnt umber i think it's called um, yeah then 
then Xandri dust lines painted onto the claws, and then Wraithbone lines painted on, and then actually on the bigger models, the bigger claws is white right at the ends as well, just to get the lines built up. On the Demonettes, it's just Wraithbone painted straight over the the purple, but I've just left small lines and some of them so you still get the little lined effect. Um but the yeah but like the weathered sort of bone effect that Yeah, got, so you, you paint like you paint it on, on with yeah on horns and um, teeth and stuff where you, you leave sort of smaller lines each time you go up to the next colour. Um but I didn't I didn't see the point in doing three stages of bone on each claw Not something and that toe. Size, yeah. On demonettes, it's just you don't need it. You you don't you can't even really spot it. If I did it to all of them, I did it to half of them and half the other ones, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell no. until you, you, you had the models a few inches from your head. It's a good. It's a good. Um, it's a good way to approach an army when you look at something like you have got forty infantry. The predominant areas is going to be the the skin blend and the hair. And, and if you if you look at the picture that I've I put up now, which is the the unit zoomed slightly zoomed out the claws look fine you, awesome. don't, you don't see that the, the fact that it's just one color of paint flat color really but then obviously even if you zoom in it, it still looks fine because you've got 40 of them but when you get to something like the keeper you want to make sure that the um you know you've put the extra effort in because they're much bigger and then it's a, more of a focal model in the army yeah and especially this is, on its claws and this is like the thing about army painting is knowing across an army which areas to to highlight to to bring the attention to it's like faces bases and shields isn't it is the kind of the um the kind of the, the ad, old yeah. adage but and it's yeah. like you said about the key element of the keepers is that if someone walked up to that army on the table and it was set up for display they wouldn't pick up a demonette straight away they'd be looking at the keepers they'd be looking at those yeah. the models that had height so they you want those to be the like the things that really pop and then obviously don't Scrimp on the demonettes, but like they don't need to be the same level as the keeper because they're they're already drawn in by the keeper, by the endless spells, by the heroes, and then the demonettes are just need to be painted to like a, a quality standard, like you've done. But it's those that like rest you don't need those levels added to it because it's yeah. not what you know. It's the faces, bases, you know, shields, uh, big monsters. They're the bits that draw people's eye. Yeah. Like if, you, if you look at my Nurgle army, I have done it on every single Plague Bearer. Every single claw is painted in four stages of dark brown oh, yes, through to white. And you'll notice that if you pick up each Plague Bearer and have a look, all their claws are painted in four layers. But if I'd have just painted them both and washed them brown, would anyone really notice? No, none would think it looks worse. I mean, yeah, it's... Sorry, go on, carry on, I was just going to say that the one thing that you look to have kept, like, uh, when I do stuff like that, it looks like you've done it here, the basing hasn't changed anywhere, because that's it, it faces upwards, it's such a large proportion of the model, that is consistent throughout everything, and then you've made your decisions in terms of efficiency on core troops, big things, small things, the smaller things are more forgiving, because it's you have to get in this far to see what's going on, and then your big stuff, where you would know if something's smooth or not, you've really gone to town on it. Yeah, and um to finish off all their eyes as well. I painted them all black and then just put a single white dot in the middle of all the eyes. I think it looks quite it's dark and demons. quite sinister on, on the old uh, demons. Shark then, eyes, isn't it? Like, sort of like yeah. great white shark eyes, which are quite cool. And then again, it's the same, the demonettes and the keepers and everything, they've all got the black the black eye. With, I think actually on the fiends, I gave them green eyes. Um, just, I, I think the eyes were just a bit bigger. Like... Uh, maybe it was just to you know add a bit of color on the heads, but you've not got you've not got as much in terms of other stuff to add color to on those, have you? Because they're just they're, they're just flesh and organic. claws. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not really a... in, I suppose. Yeah, the they're, um they're the endless well. spells you 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 painted as well, didn't you? So you put the the black eyes on the um because I haven't got a yeah. picture of the fiends to show, so I'm just on the endless spells at the moment. So um because obviously they're the sort of the the face with like the the mouth tentacles has that's got like massive big black eyes isn't it? Yeah, so I painted them black and then glossed them. Yeah, yeah. I I, I didn't even bother putting a white dot in them because the gloss will put the dot in for you. Yeah, you so can that, see in the photo that, that there's a yeah yeah, yeah. it 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 because it's such a a big rounded surface that you know it will it will highlight itself with the gloss. There's a, like two layers of gloss on it, so they're super glossy. 
Um, and then obviously they they've got like the same flame around it, like the head has got mm-hmm. the pink and purple. Uh, and then I did the same. Uh, I think I inverted the flame colors actually on the um, on the back of the hand with the mirror. Yeah, you did. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, so the mirror actually it's hard to show it in the picture, but the um, like the ripples in the mirror when you've got it in your hand look really good. They you um, hit them. You hit them from like a super extreme angle. I, with the brush. I sprayed them horizontally, and they yeah. captured the the sort of um, the peaks with white really nicely and then i just popped a satin varnish over them just to so, you know even it all out but they're um they were great to paint actually i thought the ender spells were going to be a bit of a pain to paint because the, oh, the, awesome, the, yeah. the gaps yeah. on the hand on the um the mirror what's what's the actual mirror thing called i can't remember i think it's, it's called the mirror isn't it mesmerizing it's, mirror is that it? yeah oh, the yeah. gaps on the hand that holds that mirror were um yeah a bit questionable Founded. I yeah, think things really like the lengths, aren't they? And stuff. It's... I think the endless spells almost feel like they are a bit like that. The kits they're a little bit more uh, chunky, aren't they? That's yeah, terrain. Word. It's terrain standard rather than model standard. I think. Yeah, they um, they were they were still fun enough to paint though, and I mean the wheel, the um, the blades are effectively just the blades off of a chariot stuck oh, on a base. Yeah. There's not really a lot yeah. going on for them. Um, Painted them exactly the same way as the rest of the metal. Um, what sign uh, varnish do you use, Terry? Um, just out of interest, because you've mentioned it a couple of times. And for anyone that's trying to sort of like do the same sort of thing, uh, if I got up my desk here, uh, just it's literally just Vallejo. Is it the Vallejo? One? Vallejo satin varnish. Yeah, it's um, it's one of the bigger bottles. It's in a. It's Bit not this the little sort of size. Yes. Yeah, Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing we've all got used. Everyone gets the same thing out. There you go. Yeah, that is exactly. Oh yeah, so it's, it's, it's for this one, but this is the gloss. So that's the gloss yeah. one. Um, but yeah. I've got the satin ones up there as well. Gloss brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. What have you sent Byron a list of the paint scheme that you've used? Oh so yeah. Whether Byron can put together like a bundle that we can put. I feel like a, a blue, a pink. And a flash, and then a yeah. all together version, and like the yeah. satin and stuff like that, so yeah. people can to get be it. Fair, the army it isn't actually anything. many colors. No, it's, no, you've it's done cool. a really good job of restricting it. I think. Yeah, well, again, Sharing. with army, you you want like efficiency, you know, don't you? So. Very, very few colors. Yeah. Um, yeah, there there isn't a lot in there. I mean, the green is like half the colors. The gems are like three or four colors. Um, <laughs> That's like half the color palette. So there's some grays and there's, yeah, there's not actually yeah. a lot in there color wise. Uh, I was just going to say quickly, I, the other thing I put satin varnish on was the keeper's stockings. Yeah. Um, I kind of just wanted them to have that sort of like silky satin stocking look to them because they, um, they, they, I don't know whether they're made of flesh or they're meant to be stockings or it's not very clear like whether they're. Yeah its own flesh that, pulled over itself it's that's the sculptors though that's really good so you could paint it as like latex or whatever could you if you wanted to do it that way yeah and then you, you could, could, you do, could it do it as like them black skin, and then on, you know so they look like yeah. black leather stockings or you know whatever like you could paint them and I put did like mine black. patterns on them and there's there's all sorts you could do with them but i i just sort of made them as I, if they were transparent i quite like the idea that there's somebody's skin that's kind of disturbing yeah, yeah skin I mean, cool. like, imagine doing like dark sun with like skin coloured stockings. How cool would that be? Like, yeah, black, grey, cool. flesh coloured, like like Fabius Ball's cloak, but have all of the stockings yeah. like <laughs> human flesh. I mean, flame. you could freehand like stitch patterns on them as well to make it look like they were different coloured fleshes as well. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah that would uh, be a bit, bit graphic. Like, but... Very, very good uh, video. Um, uh, the H, I think it's Hildago, is that paint. Uh, Emperor's children's flesh onto um, a Chaos Marine that I'll find the link to and put it in there if you wanted to do that. He's basically done it with contrast paints and line highlighted all the armor panels so it looks like flesh. Um, so that's really, I mean, it's really easy to do anyway if you wanted to. It's just a case of like paint it flesh and then have a steady hand and do like a dark brown line and highlight it and then it looks like that anyway. But it's, 
um, I'll, I'll put a link in the video. Just just something I'd, I'd like to talk about is the epitome, because we haven't really spoke about it much. Um, I no. put a picture of it up. So when I did mine, I, I had to do it in sub-assemblies because it, it's it's such a complicated model. I think for a lot of hobbyists, it might be quite a daunting project. Did you did you build it all with the two demonettes separately, or did you glue it to yeah, the so base? Yeah, it's, it's three pieces I did. So I did the entire mirror. Yeah, so it's like the, all the metallic bit and the tails into the yeah, base but, yeah so all of that onto a base yeah and then these the two, two separate. separate that's exactly they, what i did yeah. yeah they sit on nicely afterwards their connection points are quite obvious on the model so you can um what i do when i do these sort of sub assemblies is i put a bit of blue tack over the connection point uh so then when i'm spraying it all they stay clean plastic and then obviously yeah. right at the end, you just peel the two bits of blue tack away, and then you get that nice bit of plastic on plastic to melt together. Plus, it makes it obvious uh, to know where they go, right? So. Yeah, and it's sort of, it's your guide as well. But I have recorded all of um, the stages for the Slash Army, so I've got a video for everything basically, um, which I'm gonna um, obviously process at some point but it's, it's it's like 78 gigabytes of video recorded um so there is a there is going to be a step-by-step -step on how to paint all of these so if they do do the bundle of the paints there'll be a video to go along with it as well perfect cool right well thanks very much for talking through your your army it's really nice so if you like it give us a Super like yeah. if you want to um give us any comments or ask any questions i'm sure terry will look at the comments and come back to you um yeah. so well uh yeah that, that'll about wrap up for this this video yeah. so thanks for watching along and uh yeah, let us know what you think awesome. cool. cheers, cheers. cheers